and I thought I'd also share, share <laughs> and I thought I'd, and I thought I'd also share, oh my god. My name's Jillian, and this is Jillian Camps, Arizona, and today we're going to be doing a little something different that I have not recorded before. I decided to show you guys how to change out a tire. I have a new tire here, and this is a really old one, and I thought I'd also share some tips on when to change your tire, when is the appropriate moment to change your tire, and also what to look for in terms of a new tire. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to flip the bicycle over in order to get to the tire a lot easier. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you need to disengage the brake system and you can do this before you flip over the tire if you wanted easier access. I just do it afterwards so you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see down here, uh, I have the what's called the V-style brake, so it pinches it together in order to close it and make the brake stop the tire. What we're going to do first is we have to uh, remove the dust cover, which is right here in the middle. I don't know if you can see that. And then what we do is we, I'm just going to pinch the brakes together by hand in order to loosen them. And then you can see that the noodle just kind of disengages there. So and then you can release it and you can see that the brakes now kind of spread far apart and that's to allow clearance for your tire. So what we have to do next is we have to take off the tire. Now the front tire is a lot easier than the back tire. I don't know if you saw my previous video where it was kind of a mess but I still kind of showed you how you have to change the, you have to shift to the hardest gear, the smallest gear in the back, which is the hardest one. This one, there's no gears in the front and there's only the brake system. So we've already released the brake. So now all we have to do is disengage the tire. And a lot of tires have this quick release mechanism right here. And if you don't, if it's really difficult to get out like this one is, sometimes I use not a adjustable wrench, but just the regular wrench. That's just the single size. So now we are ready to take the tire off. So Actually, uh, I didn't have my adjustable wrench because that didn't fit. I think I'm going to have to clip that. But this one fits on here. And we're just going to use this to pry it up to loosen it. And we'll have to spin it around a couple times. And usually you have to hold the other side. So I'm going to hold the other side of the tire and spin it this way so you can see. And then you should just be able to lift the tire out. And sometimes you have to pull up with force. So I've actually got the tire iron here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just a singular plastic piece. What it does is it has a hook on one end and then a kind of a plastic pry bar on the other end in order to kind of pry the tire out. And that's what we're going to be doing today with this. So you just kind of, you go underneath the rim and you pull the tire out so that it's like that. And if the tire was really tight, you can actually hook this. Sorry, it's just because my tire is so loose and this doesn't work so well. Okay, so you can actually hook it onto the onto one of your spokes. And that way, if it's really tight in there, you can use another tire iron to put in here and kind of circle it around. But this one's easy, so I don't really need to hook it to any spokes or anything like that. So we're just going to go around and pull the tire out. It kind of pulls out like this, and then you go around. And as you can see, I'm just pulling the tire away from the rim itself. So that way it makes it easier to take the inner tube out. So you can kind of see now that it's loose there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's actually loose on the rim. So now we need to get the old tire out. So first you have to unscrew the cap and push the valve in. That way it pulls up. And I usually like to take the valve out first. And then this just comes right out. So for this video, I actually have new 26 inch tires that we're going to be putting on my old bike tires. So the key is to look at the measurements of the tire. So it says right here on the inner wall that this is 26 inch by 2.0 inches. And the one I bought is 26 inches by 1.9 inches. So again, this one's slightly smaller 
but you don't want to go too much smaller and you definitely cannot go bigger. You have to go either the same size or smaller. Okay, so you can kind of see the old tire, how it's smooth here, how there's no ridges. And the reason for this is that this is a really old used tire. So um, you just have to be wary. And it said that you can continue. I looked online. This took me a while to figure out, but I looked online and it said that you could continue using it until it's completely flat. Like it's almost square on the top, but you really shouldn't be using it any more than that because you should be changing out your tire uh, when the tread gets so smooth like that. So on this new tire, you can see where the, the ridges are a lot higher on it. You can see here where the ridges just kind of, they're a lot more prominent as compared to my old tire, which is almost rounded flat on the top, whereas this one's got more prominent ridges on the top for the tread. So um, that's just what you kind of have to look for. Usually I can never get to that stage because I live in Arizona and once it starts getting to like this where it's smooth and square on the top like this, you know it's time to change it because every time you run over even one small thorn, it just pops your tire immediately and you have to, you go through, you start going through inner tubes like crazy. So if you're going through inner tubes, maybe you should look at just changing the entire tire. Uh, what I'm going to do first is you have to take off the old tire and Sometimes you'll have to use the tire, the pry bar, but a lot of times it just pulls right off. So this one we were able to just pull right off and kind of set aside. And then next what you want to do is I like to put on just one edge of the tire on the new one first. You don't put on both edges because we still have to put in the inner tube. So we're just going to put in the one edge and you kind of just push the tire on gently using your finger. I try not to, I don't like to use any tools in this part, in this part especially, because it can get kind of messy and whatnot, and it's kind of silly to do. <laughs> okay, so before you put in the inner tube, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to feel the inside of the tire. Just feel it with your hand and kind of look on the outside just to make sure that there were no additional issues with the tire itself, like thorns and whatnot. So we're just making sure that there's no thorns that are going to harm our brand new inner tube. So that's what we're making sure. Okay, I think. So now we have one part of the tire on. So now we're going to open up and as you can see, it's loose on there, so it's not totally on, but we're ready to open up the new inner tube and put that in. So we just kind of throw the box away. Here's the rubber bands, and we roll out the inner tube. Now what you have to do first is you need to pump up the inner tube just a little bit because you can't put it in your, you cannot put your inner tube in completely flat. That's, that's wrong. You don't want to do that at all. That's bad news. So I brought my pump, and you just want to use a hand pump for this to make it as easy as possible. So I have my hand pump here, and we're just going to connect it. Connect it firmly, and then just give it a good couple pumps. You don't want it to blow up like a whole bunch, just a little bit, just enough. That way when you put it in, it can't bunch up as easy, so. I'm gonna pump it up just a couple more. So I like it where it's bendable, but it's still really flat, right? So this is good. So I'm gonna pull this. And now we find, I always like to put the valve in first. So we find where the valve goes, and that goes just under here, in here. And this will be hard because this tire's new. So I kinda have to angle the valve. So I like to pull the valve in, just pull it really tight like that. And then what you do is we just push gently in the inner tube. And don't worry if it's just slightly bunched, it'll slowly unbunch as you fill it up. This is hard to film as well, sorry. Okay, so you just push the inner tube in the rest of the way. And now for the finale. So now we're gonna push the tire in gently, very gently. 
what we're doing is we're pushing this part. This is called the bead of the tire, the part that you can see out here. And we're just going to push this underneath the rim. There, since this tire is newer, it's, uh, it's harder to use. So now we're just going to pump it up really slowly. And I just like to make sure that the bead of the tire isn't showing anywhere. And make sure that you just have the tire fully seated and make sure you can press on it, you know, just make sure that it's fully in there. And I just like to kind of glance at the tire myself and look at both sides and just make sure that the bead is under the rim. And you can kind of see like on this spot where it's out because if it's out, then that could cause you what's called a blowout basically where the inner tube is too big for the tire so it blows out the sidewall and you don't want that when you're biking so just to be careful so now we're just going to pump it up very slowly very carefully to the required size which is listed on the sidewall of this tire it says inflate to 40 to 65 i like to keep it at 65 just to make it simple and that's what we're going to do Okay, here we go. So now you just wanna make sure to use a pump that fills it up slowly, just one pump at a time. You don't wanna fill it up using an air hose or anything like that that's like automatic because it could uh, blow out your tire. And, and you can hear it, you can, every time I pump, you can almost hear it moving around. So just be sure to use a hand pump because that part's important for the tire. I have a little valve on here that tells me how many pounds I put in into it. So I'm just going to blow it up all the way to 65. And there we go. So now we're at 65 PSI. And I have a little cap here. We're going to put that on. And now we're just going to put the tire back on into here and then reattach the brakes. Okay, so this is actually the easy part. We're just going to lift and place the tire back in here. Make sure everything's totally loosened and it seats in perfectly. And as you can see, we have the brakes here still loose, so the tire should just drop right in. If you've forgotten to do the brakes, you should probably do those before. Uh, that way when you drop the tire in, it has enough clearance for the tire to get past the brakes. So uh, that's always good. So now we're just going to, I'm just gonna tighten this quite a few times because we loosened it quite a lot. Okay, that's good. And you should be able to use it with your hand most of the time, but if you can't, you can always use something like this to help push it down. So I'm just gonna use, not an adjustable wrench, but something like this that'll just force it down. Okay, I think that was too tight. So I'm actually going to pull that up and loosen it, probably just one turn clockwise. So that was way too tight. Counterclockwise, I mean. And that's way too loose, of course, go figure. Okay, that's better. See, I can almost do it all the way with my hands. So we're just gonna press that down and in. There, so you see, now we have a brand new tire. So in order to reconnect the brakes, you just kind of do what we did, just the opposite from the beginning, right? So at the beginning, we push them together and then pulled them apart. Here, we're going to push them together and then use this. It's called a, a brake noodle because it's where the brake gets lodged into there. So you just kind of push it together and you drop the noodle into place here. And that's kind of hard to do because I'm right-handed. So uh, we just kind of drop the noodle into place, push them together, and then move the dust cover over so that it covers that piece. And then what I like to do is I just like to pump the brakes a couple times to make sure that they clear the tire appropriately. And we do have that good. And then sometimes you have to adjust your brakes too. So I think this time I'm going to have to adjust my brakes a little bit because now it looks like the tire is moved in closer on that side. Yep. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, I know this video is a little different than any of my other camping unboxing videos that you've probably seen me do very recently. But I hope you enjoyed that. It was a little different and hopefully it'll kind of teach you how to take your front tire off in order to change it. And hey, I know we all like to go biking sometimes too when we go camping. So 
Uh, I'm an outdoor type of person and I really like to bring my bike when I camp. So I hope to do more of these kind of biking videos, how-to videos in the future because I actually really enjoyed making this video. So, okay, so that's about all. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you really like it and you want to see more like it. Also, if you're not currently following me and you want to subscribe, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel or on my face or feel free to like my Facebook page that's at Jillian Camps Arizona. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And actually I do have an adjustable wrench here, so I'm just going to kind of slip this underneath. Oh crap, it's too big. <laughs> it's too big. Oh well.